Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here is the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek from thelandgeek.com. And I'm with an injured, but he's still ready to podcast. Jaran Frazier from ReserveLand.com, RuralPropertyFinder.com, TheLandHub.com. Jaran, take, how take you out doing? the please. Take out the please. It's LandHub, sir. Land, no, okay, LandHub.com. Thank you. I'm Thank sorry. You. <laughs> well, since that was an acquisition of a uh, domain name last week, I have to, I have to let the listeners know that. Landhub.com is going to be the next generation real property finder.com. So anyway, I feel good. I had a little run in yesterday uh, for the listeners that don't get to hear us and our banter every day. Um, we, uh, I, I like to be active, play sports. Uh, one of them is playing basketball to stay in shape. And uh, yesterday was a little run in with a gentleman into the neck um, and caused some issues with my windpipe. So little had a little, a little trip to the ER with the, uh, with the old ambulance, so it wasn't fun. <laughs> yeah, see, now, see, this is my definition of professionalism. Even though you're injured, even though you're in pain, and it probably hurts to talk, you're still showing up to do this podcast. I can't I, tell you, I can't tell you the amount of pain I'm in right now, my friend. But a podcasting is my priority. That's right, because let's face it, you're making millions from this podcast. Oh my gosh, it's crazy! <laughs> it's crazy. I opened, I opened the mailbox today and it checks. I couldn't believe how big these checks were. Right, right. They had a, they had a, they had a, they had a period in sign of all the numbers, whatever that means. So exactly. I think like, Look, like thirty cents, forty cents. There's, there's more to life <laughs> than money, right? Exactly. exactly. Podcasting. You're, you're podcasting. You're helping people. It'll all come back. Exactly. A hundredfold. So, anyways, uh, thank you for taking time to do this, even though you're injured. So, all right, we were just talking before the call about. Being flexible in the marketplace because the market's constantly changing. There's going to be good months. There's going to be bad months. Um, things just don't constantly go up. And things don't just constantly go down. And if you don't have this attitude of flexibility and and kind of being a an experimenter in your business, you're not going to be able to uh, take your company and your business to the next level. Do you agree, Jaran? A hundred percent, Mark, and I think, oh, man, why do I keep saying a hundred percent? Okay, ninety-four percent, Mark. You I agree, ninety-four percent. Uh, to be honest with you, I think that that we are in a, we are in a, cha- a very changing, very volatile real estate market. But that doesn't necessarily mean the land market is going to change. In fact, uh, some of the things that I believe in the next few years, um, lo- looking forward, is that the land market is actually going to see a subtle increase, while the, while I believe the residential market has peaked again and is going to come back down. Because the fact is, we we had such a downturn in the 08, and it, and we never we never really uh, took a bump back up, whereas the residential market has skyrocketed. So I see a little bit of inter- a little bit more interest now with land, but like Mark said, the 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 ever evolving uh, platform of 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 changing what number one technology, number two is how you market your land, w- whether you're on Craigslist and you have an ad out, or, or you decide, hey, look, you know, I'm going to go all eBay for the next two weeks, see how eBay does, or I'm going to go stick it on. You know, real property finder, see how that does. You know, you just kind of mix it up, but you have to change up your ad. You have to change up keywords. You have to make it look fresh because what happens is it just gets stagnant, you know, and not being flexible and, and evolving with the markets means you're, you're probably going to lose customers and buyers. Right, right. Kind of reminds me, you ever go to like one of those restaurants or you ever watch Restaurant Impossible and, and you know, the guy goes in and it hasn't been updated in like 10 years and, and everything looks old and you know, dilapidated, and it's like, what are they doing? You've got so you know every day, you've got to try something new. Uh, there's a Japanese word for it. It's called kaizen, right? So you know every day, do something, iterate something to make it a little bit better. And it could be your marketing. Maybe it's a system to be more efficient. Maybe it's your sales cycle, uh, so that it's a little bit more customer centric making it easier for your buyers to actually you know 
handle the transaction, whether it's a paperwork issue or paying you via credit card or debit card, whatever it is, you've got to constantly be innovating and, and, and trying out these new things and, and being flexible in the marketplace. Otherwise, uh, it's going to get stale. It's going to get old. So what kinds of things, Dran, are you doing right now to iterate with your business? You know, actually, I've done quite a bit in the last few weeks. I've, uh, I've been playing with the, you know, as most, as most people know, we, we both, Mark, Mark and I will sell properties for all cash. We also do terms and we'll finance our clients. So one of the things I've been doing is changing the strategy and structure of how we finance. So I used to finance at a, at a fairly low interest rate. And I'd realized that there'd be people that would be doing 0% interest rate, you know, and I, we talk about the 0%. Over, over five years or 10 years, whatever they do. Uh, but the price was just, just competitive enough that you would, you would steal that buyer away from somebody else by just changing some of the aspects of how you, how you structure that, um, that offer or that, um, that ad. So I've been changing up my ads a little bit, trying a couple of different techniques now with 0%, which, you know, at the end of the day, I'm, I, you know, when I'm, when I'm selling a property for, you know, 30 grand and I paid three for it. Um, you know, and that happens and, you know, people say, oh, you're crazy. It still happens. We still get great, you know, deal. In fact, I, some of the stuff that Mark and I had looked at recently, uh, about, I think four or five months ago, I picked up some properties, some 10 acre lots that were beautiful with power, with roads. I think I picked them up for three grand. They were selling for like, I think around $90,000 at the top of the market. I picked them for three grand. Yeah. So, and, and yeah, it, I mean, that, that's the thing about this business is that happens yeah. when you, when you start making offers and going to tax sale auctions, it's. That's this business. I mean, you've got to buy it right, really right. So, and, and of course, you know, you may say, well, I'll have three grand, I don't have three grand. Well, guess what? In that situation, if you know the market, if you've done your research, I guarantee you anybody, me, Mark, anyone you know that has, you know, has a little bit of money to spend uh, and you structure the deal right, they're going to help you out. So, uh, and that's, that's something, you know, in that situation, you sell for 30 grand, you, you, you do 0% interest. You know, maybe it's, maybe it's instead of being, uh, you know, a, a forty thousand dollar deal with interest. It's actually, you know, it's thirty thousand, but you're still making a, a, you know, the profit's still ridiculous. So, right, right, and, I, and I'll tell you what I'm, I'm, I'm doing right now is I'm trying to get away from platforms that aren't either performing or that there's other sellers that are just beating me in price. So I'll give you an example. There's, you know, these five acre parcels in Colorado that I've been buying, right? And I'm getting them super cheap and I'm selling them on easy terms, but my actual price point is twice as much as the next competitor. So my sales cycle is taking longer and it's very difficult if you're online, let's say eBay, to determine how much, why is, why is my property twice as much as this guy's property? And it's in the same area. What other value add am I giving? So, you know, I'm, I'm doing other value propositions such as a better guarantee or, um, you know, 0% interest, but it's not moving. So do I really want to then just lower my price to match this guy's price? And uh, I don't think I want to do that. I think what I want to do is try other channels, either hit up, which is I'm considering my most valuable asset now is my list, either of buyers or potential buyers, prospects that have opted into my list or trying other channels. Right now, I'm really hot on Craigslist. So, uh, and I will be really hot on landhub.com as well once that thing gets rolling. So what do you do, Duran, to kind of become flexible with the marketplace when you've got a competitor that just seems like they're undercutting everybody? Yeah, you know that's that's kind of like the uh, the buy the buy and hold theory. In fact, I've talked with a couple of big uh, land sellers here in the U.S. recently that we were discussing some of those those exact things where where people had you know picked up some stuff at a at a, at a similar auction that we were at or had done some letter writing campaigns and had had you know several properties they were trying to sell and undercut everybody because they were making you know a ten percent margin or fifteen percent or twenty percent margin because they didn't care. You know, they, they bought a product for a thousand bucks and they were selling it for literally uh, $1,300, which didn't make any sense when the property's value. And, and when we say the va of course, the value is what someone's willing to pay for it. Uh, but at the same time, when you have a, a market with a ton of supply and, and very little demand, you, you can change that very quickly. And, and market, I know that very well, because there's someone that has done that to us 
um, over time, they had just you know access to too much money, and all they cared about was making 500 bucks a property instead of really focusing in on on you know the margin aspect and how to make real money uh, and get creative and put ads together that kind of stuff. So, um, I we, you know I've I've been I've been playing a game where there's certain properties I won't even list for a year. I, I'll pay. I've got property taxes. I've got and Mark, you're you're probably a little different than me, but I know I have certain properties that I, there's no way I'm under. I'm I'm not going to play the game with the market. I'm going to hold on to them. I'm going to pay holding costs, and then in a year from now, I'm going to put them on when there's no properties out there, or when maybe maybe there, there's an auction coming up in a month or two. But I'm the only person that has that land left, and then I'll put it on the market, and, that, and that you'll find there's a lot more demand that way. I like that. Now, how do you structure that with capital gains? Because if you're holding it for a year, now you're in a capital gains situation. So do you do you bifurcate your property so you've got short-term property that you're flipping and then long-term property that you're keeping for capital gains treatment? Correct, correct. And and to be honest with you, that's all. That's all. Uh, most of the stuff that I'm doing is all ordinary income, so it's not. And I have to, you know, we we need to, we actually need to get it bringing a tax guy on a conversation one of these days to right. on a, just to kind of give us a better understanding of you know because the, the tax code changes every year from Bush to Obama. Um, to our next president, who I don't, gosh, I wonder who that's going to be, Mark. What are you thinking? <laughs> maybe, maybe I, you are, maybe I, you are me. I don't I, know. I, it could I'm be a, you, you more, you more than me. I'd like to run, but uh, you've I'm, got I'm very not, strong political opinions. I do, but I'm not very articulate anymore. Um, anyway, so I, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, I, uh, I, I just think that we we need to really understand, and we need to get the listeners to understand what the best way and the best strategy is from a tax perspective, but. But yes, I'm I'm doing both tax and I'm or tax I'm doing both cash and I'm doing terms and I, most of it's ordinary income. Uh, the occasional properties, depending on what we buy, and you you have to remember that again. We talked about it: de the dealer uh, versus uh, what investor. is it? Investor. Um, that, that there's just a strategy that you can that you can work with the tax code. You know, do and I think what is it called? Um, what is it? What's the monthly payments called when you with Inst tax code? Install installment sales. Installment sale. Right. So. So right. anyway, uh, we'll get back into that another time. But uh, yeah, so that's kind of what I do. I kind of have this, I, I just know that there's certain properties, you know, you'll go to an auction and everybody will buy. And that happened recently again, where everybody bought the same properties, very, very good properties. In fact, it was the first time that they, that one, this one subdivision had 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 a foreclosure sale and probably, I want to say 15, 12, 15 years, the developer basically went defunct and all his properties went to the, to the tax auction and it won't happen again because everything was sold. And right. I bought a lot, and unfortunately, I bought a lot of them. Um, and I'm sitting on them, and we're paying, you know, property association dues of 240 per property per year. But, uh, you know, I look at it, I go, okay, cool. You know, one property, 240. You know, it's a nice property. It's probably worth, you know, six, seven thousand. I paid a thousand bucks for it. You know, that's six, seven thousand cash. I can probably sell for. Right. Uh, on terms, maybe 10, 12 grand. So it's worth holding if you can, if you can play the the market correctly and know what you're doing. A lot of people can't hold hold on properties for too long. You know, because we own them free, free and clear, and you know, I, I, we have some other cash to spend. It's not, it's not a burden on us. But some people, it's different. So you have to have to know your market, know what you're buying, <clears throat> know that if if you're walking to an auction and there's 500 other properties, that you're probably going to see a lot of competition on the market immediately. Right. Which means that you've got to be flexible and you've got to be creative. You don't want to start butting heads with 10 other sellers. In, in the same uh, in the same platform. So if let's take eBay for example, if you go to a, a tax sale auction in say New Mexico, and everyone's buying the same you know lots, let's say in in Deming. Remember Den those Deming lots? Oh uh, uh, man, Deming. Don't Deming. talk about Deming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just kidding. You know what? Deming actually has always been pretty successful for me, so I can't complain. No, no, but you know they would sell, but no, you know there's it was just it was just too competitive, right? Yep. So yeah. you've got to be able to to you know create other channels, and um, I'm really big right now on building your list. If you you know what I'd spend more time on creating landing pages and getting people to opt in for your valuable information and start cultivating relationships with your potential buyers than I would spending you know a lot of time and a lot of money on a website. I know, I know it's crazy to hear, but I, what what good is the website going to do you? I mean, you need a website, I guess, for credibility, but I don't, I don't get tons of sales from my website. What about you? No, I don't. I don't to be honest with you, which is very interesting because I actually drive quite a bit of traffic to my website. But at the end of the day, there's there's so much maintenance and, and updating on a website. 
Um, and of course, one of the ideas that I had for Land Hub was to create uh, a portion of Land Hub giving the, the seller the access to build a one-page template with their property or multiple properties um, on, uh, on, a, on a WordPress template that's run straight out of Land Hub because at the end of the day, you just don't have time to manage it and to update it. So we want to create these templates to give sellers the ability to go out there and do and focus on what's important. The website is important, but it's definitely not a priority. Like you said, building a list, getting involved in, in touch and engaging with people that are already interested. Um, they don't, they're not, you're, you're not going to get them to come to your website and read the, read the information. You got to give it to them. Right, right. So you, you've got, you've got to give them an ethical bribe, so to speak. So, you know, if I'm going to give you my first name and email address, what are you going to give me that I'm going to find valuable? So like Duran's creating the free land report. Um, I've got three fatal land buying mistakes and, and some other, uh, information as well that, um, I give out. So, you start creating these these relationships, and I find that is is so much more efficient use of time than you know just going on a WordPress site and uh, you know updating your site or updating you know trying you know trying to drive traffic to a website. It's hard, right? It is. It is, and you know I think I think at the end of the day it comes down to it comes down to understanding where the real value is and what platforms work best for what you're trying to accomplish. So, right, right. Um, so if you're trying to sell for cash and you need money tomorrow, you know, you go to eBay. If you're, you know, if you're, if you're looking at, and, and, and the other, the other frustrating part too is, you know, I look at, we look at, you know, the conversion rates of the different websites that we use and Mark and I use sites like eaglestar.net and uh, landsofamerica.com and landwatch.com. And all these platforms are based on, on, on search, meaning, they drive search and you pay for it because that's what they offer you is that people are coming to the website. But right. what they don't, what they don't, what they don't tell you is that it's not user friendly. None of these sites are user friendly. They're all based, it's all based upon money. I want to give sellers the ability on the backside as a seller to have everything at the tip of their fingers. And, and yes, you're going to put, you're going to list on my, on my side and the other site. Oh, when it's time to turn off a Lands of America account, because I've literally been on their site for, I don't know, five months, had seven or eight or nine properties that I've listed just to see how it goes. No, I've gotten, I think I got one inquiry. So, yeah, and you that, pay, that, you know, yeah you're, that, that's not good. And, and, you know, those, those platforms, they're spending real money on Google. Uh, yeah. and they're, they're spending real money on, on search engine optimization. Yeah. And if, if you do, uh, a keyword search for, say, land in Nevada, those platforms are going to be the first ones. They're always going to be on, on page one. So it's really tough, and you know, I don't know. How do you feel about blogging for uh, for your search engine optimization on your, on your website? Okay, so there's a little secret that I know about, which we can share with the readers. And one thing that that Google is really, really, really focusing in on now with their with their recent updates with Panda and everything, um, and I don't know what the, what was Panda and Penguin is that that they're trying. And I think they've had a re more recent one. They they they're constantly the the algorithm constantly evolves. Because what they're trying to do is they're trying to prevent, um, you know, content that's duplicated uh, to not somehow get to page one of, of their search engine. So what they want is they want us as as bloggers, as writers, uh, to write unique content that's compelling, that makes us readers want to read. And it's funny, last night I would happen to be, I'm a, I'm a contributor in Yahoo's network, um, so I will, I will write articles for Yahoo occasionally. Um, but... The interesting part is reading, reading what, what there's like, they had like a little course and I was reading, I was going over it last night. You know, it's, it's so interesting what, what Google and Yahoo are focusing on, which is strictly content. And in fact, they'd much more see content than a bunch of, you know, you know, messed up links from stuff that doesn't relate. And you actually get, you'll get penalized from Google and penalized from these different search engines because you, you're, all you're trying to do is build these, you know, it's basically we, what, what's called in the SEO world is black hat, build it, build it. Right build a site based on black hat tactic, tactics uh, of trying to get your, your site to the top. So it's all about unique content. It's all about blogging. And you want to get, see, you, you, if, you get a, if you get an article that does really well and, and all of a sudden you're providing information to other people that's, that's really pertinent, it's, it, the chance of it going viral and you getting the backlinks and natural backlinks is, is big. I mean, and, and to have that is huge for your, for your site and for what you're trying to accomplish. So it's all about content. If you, if you can write, great. If you can't write, go find someone who can write for you. Um, because that, that is going to be something and, and a little, I think we talked about this a little bit, Mark, is that Google, uh, the Google Plus, uh, um, 
concept, which they put together, obviously, is is um, basically taking people in our circles. So you bring people in your circles, and you, you whether you tag them as friends or acquaintances, whatever they are, um, they're in your circles. Now, um, and did we talk about this? Like, if Robert Kiyosaki is your friend, and um, no, no, we didn't. We didn't talk about this. We, okay. we we we've never even talked about Google Plus. Okay. So this is something that I think. But that we all, we ran. Who's on Google Plus? Okay. This you, here who it's not it's not who it's who has to be on Google Plus. You really? now, you you're, now, you're recommending Google Plus. You now do not have a chance. You don't have a choice. You get on Google Plus or you're in trouble. Okay. 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 I'll tell you I'm, why. I'm, look, I'm on Google Plus, but I'm not posting anything there. Okay. Okay. You need to start. I'll tell you why. Okay. Hey, Google Google has an authorship program. Okay. And the authorship program basically is you want to be a verified author. And there's a if you type in if you type in the word Google verified author on their on their plat on their uh, search engine, it'll take you to a page and it'll show you how to do that. There's some coding. There's some coding you have to put into your site. Except that I've done all this stuff on different sites, um, but the idea is basically that once you're a verified author with Google, you're you're you will rank higher just because of that. So, but if you're in my circle, so let's just say Robert Kiyosaki, um, it, you know he's in he's in your circle, Mark, and <clears throat> and I and I write or I'm searching for uh, real estate investments, right? right? And Kiyosaki writes an article. Have you seen that little Google Plus photo now of people that show up toward the top of the search engines? With an article, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what that is. That's called verified authorship program. So that's so what happens is because they are in my network because of you and, and he's now in your network. He he's he's considered a um, you know, a verified author that goes that that and and his work would be syndicated prior to anybody else because of the circles and how they work. So okay, it's, so, so let me get this straight. So you're recommending get on Google Plus, opt in to become a verified author. If you're a writer, correct. It, well, anybody can be a writer. Start writing articles. So if I'm going to write a blog on my website, I might as well push that out to Google Plus. Correct? Well, okay. It's not that you're pushing it out to Google Plus. I mean, yes, link it to your Google Plus. Um, like, okay. Am I writing it in Google Plus or am I writing no, it first on my no, website? No, on your website. Okay. On your website. And then you create yourself. Once you're on your, you can actually, in, in, in your Google Plus account, you can sign up as an author. It'll show you on like a, a, on the bottom right. I'm not sure under what account tab it is, but it shows you who, like who you write for if you're an author for, and you can put in the site, and then you can go accept it. You can go back to the domain. You just got you have to do a little bit of work, you know, just like if you're doing your analytics or anything else. Do a little work, and you accept that that page as yours, right? Um, that that blog, and then you're you're considered a verified author for that for that particular blog, okay? okay. And got so it. if you if you write a blog now, Google's following that blog. So if it's a, if it's a if it's a blog and information that that Google finds as authentic and you and unique content, they're going to syndicate it out through the search engines when someone searches particular keywords. If you've stuffed the keywords correctly and you've done everything right, that makes sense. That makes so, sense. Okay. So, so so this is the order of things that you're recommending. Sign up for Google Plus. Yep. Become a verified author. Correct. Blog on your website. Right. Yep. Link that blog to your Google Plus account. Correct. Use the correct. Do your keyword research. Right. Correct. Don't stuff. Correct. Don't do keyword stuffing, but yeah. have Stuff. at least two or three good keywords in each article, and that drives traffic back to the website. Correct. You'll you'll eventually you'll move up ranking wise in the search engines because of the unique content and what okay. you're writing about. So if I do a search for uh, cheap land in New Mexico, and you just wrote an article about a tax sale in New Mexico, you'll come up on that first page. Correct. I think what, what Google is, is trying to get away from is trying to get away from pages that really don't, like, you know, and, and you know, because you go to a page and be like, okay, cheap land in New Mexico, and I see 100 lots in New Mexico. Now, right. you know, they want to get to particular places where people are writing about it, where the content is real. And and so and 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 has the op the opportunity of going viral in in one one fashion or another. So in in this situation, that's the way they do it. They'll they'll you'll become a verified author and they'll syndicate your yours at the top of the search engines uh, prior to a you know to a Lands of America you know page with with a bunch of property on on the page that doesn't have anything to do with what the what the search was. Right. Right. Okay. So, so that's interesting. Now because this is about working smart and not hard. You know, sitting down to write about something is hard. So 
I struggle with it, Dran. I don't know. Do you struggle with that? Yeah. I, so here's what's really funny: is growing up in school. First of all, I have, I, I, as you guys all know, I'm ADHD by you know times twelve. <laughs> um, but I'm I'm very good at honing in and, and focusing when I need to. But I, I was a horrible writer. And I remember my writing teacher was like, oh, dude, you are. I, I was a creative guy. Like I was always thinking something like off the wall, but I couldn't I couldn't articulate. So so as I got older and as I started getting, you know, as I started learning more and reading on the Internet, I still I still like to read a lot of the news on the Internet. I started going, gosh, you know, I, I like to write. So I started writing it. And about seven years ago, I just started writing and, and writing came so natural to me that now I can literally write an article and I write, I think, you know, Mark, I'm a published right. author in, in a big magazine here in San Diego right. called 4L Matt. You know, you know, you know, you are, you're the Quentin Tarantino of raw land. Okay. Perfect. perfect. Cause have you ever heard Quentin Tarantino's interviews? No, no, no. no he's, he's like, he's like this creative genius, but he never even went to college. Like he, he started like a blockbuster and then <laughs> and it was writing, you know, these un unbelievably brilliant scripts on the side. And then, you know, next thing you know, uh, he's he's in you know winning an Academy Award for Pulp Fiction. Oh, yeah. But like, but if you hear him talk, like he's all over the place. Yeah, that's, and that's me. I mean, my friend's like, "What? Are you okay, Duran?" I said, "I'm fine. I'm not on any drugs. I know I should be, <laughs> but um, but no, that that is, I guess you're right. In a, in a way, that is kind of me, and that's kind of how how I operate. But yes, I I've written several pieces, and in fact, there's a website called Forward Metrics where I contribute to their website, but. There's a magazine here. No, in no, I know, I know, I know you're a good writer, but how do you come up with your ideas? How do you look at a blank screen and say, "This is what I'm going to write about today"? Dude, I was just about to get there before. I was just doing a little self promotion, and then I was going to get to that piece right All there. Right, don't, fine. Don't, don't rush please, me. Okay? Please go to forwardmetrics.com. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Duran okay. has an equity stake in no. forwardmetrics.com. <laughs> All right, go ahead. That, okay. Now, now we plugged you. Oh, I'm just kidding. Okay, anyway, so listen. Um, to, so. For me, as a creative guy, I always think about things that people don't think about. Like, don't like my brain kind of goes off, but I, I think about land and I go, you know what? Like, what could I do with this land that no one's done before? Right. So that always makes me go, OK, well, if I if I can do this, I can probably write about it or think about ways to write about it. So let's let's just talk about maybe solar for a minute. Right. OK. How do I how do I take a piece of land? Um, and, and utilize it at some level and go off grid. Well, there's several ways you can do it. Um, but I would think about creating something from an, from an aspect, number one, that's cheap. Number two, that, that no one's replicated. And, and then as I'm thinking about my ideas, I'll just kind of jot it down on a piece of paper or I'll write it on the internet and then I'll come back to it. So I'll like, I'll kind of try to formulate the idea. And it may take me, sometimes it takes me a day or two or three to formulate one idea. Um, but I, I'll take ideas of, of, and I know that everybody's brain is different and it's not like mine, but it but it 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 always takes taking a piece of something and putting it somewhere else where it doesn't belong. Because okay. that's how that's how you put ideas together. So whether like solar and land don't really go hand in hand, but you can put them together and they can make something. Does that make sense? That that makes total sense. So so that's what I'm always doing. I'm always trying to innovate in my brain how to take something over over here that has to do with, you know real estate and then and then take a marketing concept that no one's ever thought about you know and one of them which again on my on my on my crazy crazy brain here's you know one was real estate and nonprofit. they okay. don't really they don't really go hand in hand but i made them go hand in hand because i came up with a concept called i give realty and i give realty was giving 25 percent of every commission I, I give realty yep and i have the website up there you're, you're a capitalist right i am yes that, um, that doesn't sound very capitalistic well, but you know, I'm a big giver too, Mark. So no, I, I know. So, so I, so I just thought of a concept of, of, of going after these people that are giving to nonprofits and going, Hey, you can go, you can now use this program as, as a, you know, this brokerage to, to give 25% of your commission back to charity of your choice. Okay. So, so just taking ideas and people are like, well, oh, that's kind of a cool concept. That's a lot of money. I'm like, yeah, but in San Diego, where a property, average property is 500 grand and the average commission is 25 grand, uh, you know, on a deal or, you know, half being 12 and a half thousand two grand or three grand to give to a charity to make nine grand. I mean, you know, yeah, it's not, it's not exactly. So, so, so that's the kind of things that I, that I do in my, in, in my wacky brain of mine is I try to take concepts, put them together and then I write about it. And that's, and I, and I think about how to innovate and create and write because there is, there's so much stuff out there that we can put together that we don't know how to do because we don't let our brains go there. We have to let our brains go out there and pick, choose put things together right right okay so i'm gonna I'm, I, for my tip of the day i'm gonna give everybody an actionable tip because this is what i really do 
when I have to sit down and write. First thing I do, I turn off my internet, and I might use freedom.com, uh, something like that. So I don't want to. I don't want to. I want to completely clear my head. I turn off my phone. I turn off my email because uh, I don't want. I don't want the little ding. I don't want to be distracted at all. Then what I do is I'll close my eyes, and I'll use a program. And this is going to be my tip of the day. It's called Drag and Dictate. Now, uh, there's if you have an iPhone or smart Android phone, uh, I think you can get drag and dictation for free. But I have it on my computer. I think it was like 50 or 100 bucks. So what I'll do is I'll put on my headset and I'll just close my eyes and I'll just start talking. I'll just start talking like I'm talking to Duran. And actually, sometimes I'll even picture that I'm talking to Duran. Wow. And I'll just go and I'll just start talking about, okay, I find this, I find this concept interesting about whatever it is. And then from there, it's, it's dictating. And then Next thing you know, I've got an article. Or what I'll do is I'll take sometimes uh, when I do these my coffee talk YouTube videos, I'll take a YouTube video, one or two of them, and I'll transcribe them. So transcription services are really inexpensive now. I'll take that transcription and then I'll kind of clean it up, or I have my VA clean it up, put it up on my website. So it's it's not so you know difficult. To sit down, I mean, it's it's a hard thing to do. Okay, what am I going to write? You know, if you just start like that. So those are my tips. Drag and dictate. And then what I used to do at my old office, what I'm just going to start doing now at my new office, is I would have uh, drag and dictate open on my iPhone, and I would just start walking and taking a, taking a walk and then talking, and an idea will come to me. And uh, it's real quick to clean up, edit it, ship it. Duran, what's your tip of the day, babe? Wow, wow, wow. Mark, you you know what? You are far you are way different than me, man. I just uh for me I can just sit, put my head down, bang it against the wall three times and something comes out. But that, that's um, great. That's great. Yeah, it's it's uh my I've got like four holes in my wall right now I gotta fix. But anyway, so you know you uh you talk about, you know, it's creative writing is, is not easy. Let's let's just get this straight and, and it's work. So don't think that you're gonna go, Oh, this is gonna be really simple, uh, you know, I'm gonna get this done. It's not easy, okay. But at the same time, for you to go and 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 put something together that 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 is very good and and unique and compelling, it's very important. And so there's a couple of websites. One that one that can give you ideas is called CreativeWritingPrompts.com. Um, and and so there's there's various sites out there that can kind of give you ideas. So look on look on places that you feel like could help you spur the ideas. So there's plenty of websites out there that can do that for you. Just don't get caught in all the uh, in all the muck because that what happens is you go yeah, to one see, site. See, that's what happens to me. I, I start getting sidetracked. I can't look in on the internet for ideas anymore. So, the next thing I know, I'm I'm like I'm gone in internet land. Yeah, yeah, and I you know I do the same thing. I get I get trapped in in various websites sometimes, and and uh, for me though, that's how my brain operates because it, I actually get ideas by doing that. So like I'll take like 15 minutes. Like my my uh, my snack break would be like going for 10 minutes and going to like literally going as fast as I can over 15 sites that I go to all the time, right. going to get all the information I can. And then something comes to my brain. So, um, but that's, that's, again, we're all different. We're all unique in, in the way we think. Uh, but go to, go to a place, get creative ideas, go to, I think creative writing prompts.com is a great place, but there's several out there. Just put in creative writing tips or ideas, uh, in Google and you'll find a ton of different ideas out there. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's very, very important to your business. Um, is number one is to is to write good, good, unique, compelling content and put in some keywords as well. Yeah, and but that, uh, I mean, we we talked about that that site as well that helps you guide you that WordPress plugin Yoast. Uh, I'll link to that again, but Y O A S T is great to help you focus on your title and you know what keywords and your main point of that article and and really helps with the search engines. So again. You know, we kind of went all over the place this podcast, but uh, we are in the market. And you, if you know, my number one tip for successful people is you've got to be flexible. Don't have these rigid types of stance as well. You know, Mark said, you know, I should market here. Well, it, that could change. You know, or Duran said we should market here. That changes all the time. You've got to test, you've got to measure, and you've got to iterate. And not just weekly. 
you know, try something new to improve your business every single day. If you do one thing a day, just one iteration a day to improve, that's you're gonna have a, an unbelievably uh, more effective business than you would if you just did it on a on a weekly basis. So, Dran, what are you gonna leave us with? Um, just always a B, the ABC is always be creative. Always, yeah. Always be creative because that's important to to your business. And like Mark said, you know, the efficiency and effectiveness of a, of a business means means being flexible, doing different things, changing it up, evolving, being creative because that's what that's what Mark and I did, and that's how we became successful um, together as a team over the last ten or twelve years. And uh, and so if you if you want to be good at this game, you got to remember that. All right. So Duran Frazier from LandHub.com, RuralPropertyFinder.com, ReserveLand.com. Do me a favor, go to ReserveLand.com, buy a piece of wholesale land from Duran. If you don't like his property, come to my site, FrontierPropertiesUSA.com, buy some wholesale land from me. Ideally, you go to both our sites. Listen, download for free the Passive Income Blueprint. It's free at TheLandGeek.com. And uh, subscribe to my free YouTube videos, uh, the Lane Geek Coffee Talk subscription. Anyways, uh, Dran, thanks again. I know you're hurting this morning, but that's the true mark of a professional showing up even when he doesn't feel like it. So uh, this is Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, saying make it an extraordinary week. We'll see you next week. Thanks a lot. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.